Hello everybody, happy Saturday, happy Saturday, the Lord is good, the Lord is good, God is good, praise the Lord, amen, amen, I always put my introductions like that because God is good and I always want to put him first before um, we even start the video, um, definitely open up in prayer, I just felt that in my spirit today, so Lord, I just pray for those that are listening to this video, Lord, I just pray, Father God, Lord, that you give them hope that, Lord, that you remove any fears from them, Lord. Anything that is not of you has to flee right now in the name of Jesus. I capture every negative thought in the name of Jesus and, and I command it to go back to hell where it belongs in Jesus' name. And I ask you, Lord, to send your angels to minister to each and every person that is listening to this video right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Father God, as your peace is over them, Lord. Just let your peace fall over them. Give them hope, Father God, Lord. Give them clarity. Give them direction, Lord. Give them solutions to their problems, Father God, and give them the strength to fight the devil in the name of Jesus, Father God, Lord, because that battle has already been won at the cross, has already been won. He's just messing with us. So, Lord, I pray you just give him the strength to say, bye, devil, not today. Go back to hell where you belong with your demons. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. I felt that was a word for somebody this morning. And praise the Lord. Um, also, what came into my mind was fear. And definitely not to have the fear of the Lord. Um, the fear of God is different than having fear from the devil. The devil will come and install fear in you. So you could be scared of him. Scared to pray more. Scared to step out of the box. Scared to do something you've never done before. Fear can um, cripple us. It can be a bondage. It can freeze us up and we can't move. That's fear. But you overcome fear by Jesus Christ. You got to know that you are bigger than that fear. Amen. You're stronger than that fear. Why are you stronger? Because you're a believer. You are a believer of Jesus Christ. You are a child of God. Because of Jesus, we have the power to tell the devil, no, you need to go in Jesus' name. But you need to believe it. Because if you don't believe it, then it's not going to go. It's going to keep on tormenting you. But you have to believe that God is bigger than that and, st and stand up straight, put your head up, and just say exactly that. Because you know what? The devil is afraid of the name of Jesus. The devil doesn't like hearing when we plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over me. Um, devil, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Remember, there's a spiritual warfare out there. And the Bible talks about it. We're not just, this is not make-believe. And this is not just science. You know what I mean? This is real life, right? That's why the Lord warns us in his word. He's always warning us. He's always preparing us. He's always letting us know just in case those days come by and the devil wants to mess with you and try to get you in a depression, in a choke, in a head choke, right? Feel like you can't breathe, right? Well, that's when you got to call out the name of Jesus and you watch what will happen. Amen. That is a word for somebody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I was reading in my Bible this morning and talking about fear, right? I wanted to go into 1 John chapter 4, 4. And it's interesting because I love the, I love, I love the New Testament. I'm a New Testament person. Um, I love reading all the way through Jesus's ministry to the, to the more of the, the church afterward, you know, and, um, just the book of Acts and, you know, all that. And then we stop in Revelation and Revelation is hard for me to chew on sometimes. So I got to like swallow it slowly. But some people are just find that fascinating and they get into Revelation. But I really love that part there. I love the Old Testament as well. We got some people who just really love the Old Testament. Um, I just, I like the New Testament more, but I do read the full gospel. Amen. Can't be one without the other, right? Praise the Lord. So... I want to go to um to first John chapter four and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go to where I originally wanted to read but then I wanted to go back a little bit and then so because that is a word for somebody as well as I was reading so I was like okay we need to we need to address this so um so the first of all chapter four is labeled the spirit the spirit of truth 
and the spirit of era that's the title for it and i got my new king james version bible here which i love this bible this bible was given to me um from one of the very first churches that i went to in austin and um you know it was an outreach church loved them tremendously and they gave me a gift which is a bible and i read this like i read it like no tomorrow amen it's so simple and basic you know anyway so on here um it does says here i'm going to start off where it starts with the title it says now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he and he in him and by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us let me repeat this again now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he okay and he in him and by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us interesting huh so those that keep god's command okay abides in god he lives in god um he's in the dwelling place of god and it says here that by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us with the holy spirit so keeping god's command is all part of abiding in god's presence amen and on here if, we, if i go back to the title it says the spirit of truth and the spirit of error now the thing is that we want to find out who really is of god and who's not who's got one foot in and who's got one foot up we have those that are trying. We have those that know the Lord for quite some time and they're still not abiding in him. Um, you got those that are just lying. They're just fakers. You know, they smile, they pretend to have that glow, but when they speak, it's like, whoa, what was that? <laughs> Where did that words come from? Or what was that? Doesn't even sound like grace. Now, am I saying that we're all perfect? No. But you can tell a tree by its fruit. And Jesus talks about that in the New Testament, in his word, in his ministry. You can tell a tree by its fruit. And it's interesting that you can catch it off guard as well. If you hang around a person long enough, you will be able to see fruits from them. And you'll see where their hearts are at. And many times, you know, um, we should, as brothers and sisters, point it out. Like I've said in videos before, we should point it out nicely but point it out right but sometimes that person doesn't want to change sometimes that person is not really into god and then that's when you have to let go and let god and love from far <laughs> you really do because you know this person and you've been trying and trying and trying and it just keeps on you gotta let me this is for somebody and i'm gonna go into this really quick there's a point in life where you have to know to let go and there's a point where you have to know you have to love from far and you have to remove yourself from that situation, from that environment, from that person. You have to close the door, but you don't want to close it with the lock and the chains because you never know that after that person goes through things, if they're going to come back and that's when they need some ministry, they need a friend to talk to and that's fine. But you're going to do it with caution because you want to guard your heart and you want to protect your heart right amen you want to you're not being selfish you're just being precautious because you know that if i get too close it's gonna kind of mess up my walk if i get too close it may it may you know corrupt my heart because sometimes like some people i know that um back in the past some people will say well you know i'm gonna go there to say a recovering alcoholic and they're gonna say be like well i feel like i i want to reach out to people who are alcoholics so i'm gonna go to the bar so they'll go to a club, go to a bar, and then, you know, they go to church, they've been faithful and everything, but all of a sudden, they're not strong enough to be able to be in that environment. So guess what? It starts overtaking them little by little, and they get these thoughts, and next thing you know, they're drinking. One drink won't hurt, two drinks won't hurt. Next thing you know, you fell off the wagon. You're not going to church, not in the work. You're back to being an alcoholic. You're in a situation that's going to be hard to get out of, you know? Not that God won't forgive you, but you just put yourself into a really big hole, and now you don't know how to get yourself out of it, and that happens. So, and again, there is scripture with that as well. So you have to be careful. And you have to be wise and who you choose as friends, who you choose to be around, <coughs> excuse me, who you choose as friends, who you choose to be around, who you want to stay connected to. And it's sad because, you know, you want to enjoy this person or you want to like, let's say if you have something in common, you know, you like to go to the museum together. 
You like music together. You like to read books together. You know, you like to go on horse rides together, you know, and it's a great person, but that person is making you stumble. So then, you know what? You're going to have to pray for somebody else who you're going to have to pray for God to bring somebody who will be a better um, fit for you. Okay. Um, that enjoys what you like. And there are plenty of people out there. There really is. It's a big old ocean. It's not about all that one person. So that's a word for somebody. So I want to go ahead and continue on with this here. So it says here on um, chapter four, going according to what we just said, I'm going to read this as beloved. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. They are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God. Okay. Okay. And then it says here, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Isn't that kind of interesting too? Because it says confess and, and it's very clear that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Okay. Um, of God. So Jesus went around saying that he is the son of God, right? He is God. Okay. The son of God, he is God. So you have some believers that be like, oh, I believe in Jesus. But they never confessed that Jesus is the son of God, that Jesus is God in the flesh. Dig a little deeper and you find out. Okay. Um, interesting. So let's go down a little bit more. It says, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is already in the world. Being deceived. Okay. I'm not saying that's everybody, but just... Be careful, choose your apples and oranges carefully, discern, be careful, and be wise. Amen. Now, it says here number four. Now, this is where originally my video was supposed to, um, <laughs> this is where I originally came on here for. So you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen. Read it for yourself. It is chapter 4. It goes deep. It was 1 through uh, one through 6. Praise the Lord. But the main one that I wanted to go ahead and focus on was saying on fear. And so don't let fear hold you for from what god has in store for you um i came up with this this morning because you know i had picked up a small side hustle right while i'm working on other side hustles that i would like one day to produce more income but for now i picked up a small side hustle and it was with a retail store and i it just it just killed me <laughs> it really did it was not for me at all between management the customers and not be able to have the right tools to be able to work with and be efficient and then be looking at down like if i'm stupid was not working for me so i i tested i stood there for one i know a lot of times we think oh we should stay we should stay but remember this is just my side hustle okay so um so i said well there gotta be other side hustles and nowadays there are other side hustles you could do so many different things and uh so anyways i was praying and i then a girl in my job um my my real job um had told me what she's been doing and she loves it and you get paid daily. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try it out. But the thing is that when I looked at some videos on how to do it and stuff like that, I was like, oh, I got to go shopping for people and I got to deliver it. Oh, what if I get the wrong food? Oh, this is a hassle. Like all these negative thoughts are just coming to me. So then I, I kind of breathe. I let it go. I went to sleep, woke up this morning. And the Lord was like, rebuke that fear and pray that you don't have fear that you're not scared of doing this job. Because I believe that all of a sudden I got a revelation and God was telling me that the reason why, you know, you know, I'm going to bless you in this side hustle. And um, the reason the devil is messing with you because he knows that you're going to do good. So I said, oh boy, I said, okay, but let me pray. So I said, Lord, you know, remove all fear from me on this job. Remove all fear and that I'm able to do it gracefully. I enjoy what I do and that I will get a lot of customers and get paid. And it was as simple as that. Just like I got simple conversation with god talking with god in jesus name amen so next thing you know that fear went away and i was like okay i'm gonna try it out i'm gonna try it out this you know this weekend i'm gonna try one run and see how it goes and and go but all of a sudden those thoughts left me because i had a simple conversation with god 
I had a simple talk with God and he gave me a simple solution when I woke up this morning. And guess what? I've been writing and always have a journal or a notepad where you can write these things down because you might forget or get your phone out and just start writing them down and refer back to them later on. But I want you to know that talking to God is as easy as literally a simple conversation. You already have the Holy Spirit in you. You already have the Spirit of God. You already have somewhat of the Word in you. You already know God. Just talk to Him, right? And uh, and He will give you solutions. Now, the thing is that when He does give you a solution, don't fight it. Don't go back. I mean, come on. You ask God for advice. And if you ask God for advice, take it. Don't say, oh, I don't want that. I... I know how to, you know, do this, you know, then why are you asking God for help if you have the answer? Period. Period. That's it. Done. So guess what? God's going to be like, next time around, well, then, you know, I'm not really going to give you any advice because you don't take my advice anyway. So again, it's a relationship. So you don't want to ever get like that. If anything, answer in a polite way and be like, Lord, thank you for that. But Lord, is there maybe something else I can do? Because I, you know, I, even though this is great and everything, like I asked the Lord to give me that retail job because I needed it specifically to get my place and then so um he blessed me with it and then when i was in i was like oh my gosh it's horrible but then he reminded me and he said well lisa i gave you this job just to get into your place now that you're there they go over and look for something else this is literally god speaking to my spirit and i was like you know what lord you are so right and then so that's when I prayed and I asked God again, because a lot of times when we do things on our own, on our own um, you know, the results are not always going to be great. So there's times, yeah, I make, you know, choices on my own. But then there's times when I'm like, yeah, I think I, I really need to get God into this one because I don't want to mess up. I, there's too much rely, too much relying on this prayer. So let me go to God, you know, and that's how my relationship is with God. And I pray that that's your relationship with God. You know, we can hear preachers, we can hear people, but how is it personal to you? And that is why, um, you know, the Lord was like, Lisa, you need to share your stories. You need to share your experiences. You need to share my word. You need to teach people about how to live life with me. It's a lifestyle. I always say that it's a lifestyle, but let it be a real lifestyle. And don't just look at God as a microwave. You get what you want and you're done. Don't do that. Don't look at him like he's a speck in the sky. Don't do that either because that's not cool at all because God is real. He is very real. And one day you're going to see him face to face. Okay. Whether you're being judged. Okay. In the land book of life. Because believe it or not. I hear a lot of people out there say that, you know, um, you know, don't judge anybody. Yeah, you're right. Don't judge because we're not perfect ourselves. But guess what? Jesus can judge. He sure can. And guess what? If you read the book of Revelation and you pull it up, there is a book called the, the, the book Lamb of Life, I think it's called. Okay. And in it, when the time comes and he's going to judge the world, he is going to pull it open. And if you did not repent before you died, okay, guess what? You're going to stand before him. And he has account of everything you did, good and bad. Okay, and then he's gonna go ahead and be like, Well, so and so, no, 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 but you did do this and this and that, but da 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 da. And then he's gonna decide if you're gonna go through the pearly gates or you're gonna go to eternal hell, and that's in the book of Revelation. Don't be blinded, okay, because God is good, yes, he is, and he is merciful, and he is gracious, and he will give you a chance, but it's gonna come to a point where that chance is gonna run out. And you're going to have to live up to your consequences. And that's how God works because it's in it. Along with all the other ones that you choose and pick on Proverbs and all this. Don't forget there's the ultimate book. And it's called Revelation. And this is real. So when, when we walk with the Lord and we have a respect for him. Let's understand that at the end of the day. Our souls depend on it. At the end of the day. Where we're going to go next depends on it. Now, God, will, like I said, will work with you. But how many times? Because one day you're going to leave this and you got to know where you're going. Amen. That is, again, a word for somebody. I wasn't planning to come on here and talk about that, but just the fear. But I do want to mention, don't have fear for what God has for you. Know, for you. Don't be scared to step out of the box. And don't be scared, okay, of the, what the devil's saying. Know who you are in Christ. 
And it's as simple as the name of Jesus. It's as simple as the blood of Jesus. It's as simple as the devil get away from me in Jesus' name. Because the devil listens to the name of Jesus, not to you. So that's the way you stand up to the devil. So um, I am going to end that note on that for today's uh, little topic. Praise the Lord. Again, that's John chapter 4. Praise God. Um, you are always welcome for a prayer request. You got questions, you're welcome to put a comment below. Um, I'll try to put my email at the bottom. If I'm putting this, I'm going to put this on YouTube. So I'll put an email there, but you're welcome to message me on Facebook. And you guys are awesome. I thank you for being part of, you know, Together Beyond Blast for the Women's Club and also the Real Talk, Real God. Amen. Because we do serve a real God and we do have real talk where we have real incidents that happen in life and we do call on a real God, right? But how is he going to answer? How is he going to apply it to your own life? Come on, be real, right? Amen. Until the next time that we talk, God bless each and every one of you and I pray you have an amazing, amazing day. God bless you. Bye now.